Good morning, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are well and have had a good start to the new year. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing Nike's Super Shoes, or their marathon shoes, the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly. I hope you enjoy the video, let's get into it. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the main differences between the shoes and similarities my experiences in racing in the shoes, and finally, if I had to pick one or the other, which would I choose if I could only race in one again? So first of all, the similarities between the shoe. Both of these shoes are designed for, ro for racing the marathon, and they're both incredibly high stack height shoes. Very different to the tr traditional racing flats that many people were used to racing in. So it does take a little bit of time to get, um, to get running in these. It does feel a little bit strange under your foot. They both have a carbon fiber plate, um, and they both are made from Nike's Zoom X um, foam, which is meant to be their fastest foam they've ever made, and it's meant to give you the most energy return, so they're both incredibly responsive shoes. I went true to size in both of these shoes, where, and I'd say the Vaporfly is a much snugger fit, whereas the Alpha Fly seems to be a little bit big. Maybe next time if I, went, if I was gonna buy it, I'd go half a size down, um, so seven and a half, whereas I stay true to size in the Vaporfly for an eight. Okay, on to the differences now. So the main differences between the shoes that I've found is the offset, so the difference between the heel and the toe. In the Vaporfly, which is the slightly older version of the um, Nike's racing shoes, has an eight millimeter drop, whereas the Vaporfly, um, the newer version, has a four millimeter drop. So I've found when running in these shoes, the Vaporfly definitely gets me more onto my toes, um, which I've found sometimes it can, after a run in these shoes, I, my calf seem to hurt a little bit more, so I think it gets you proper on, more onto your toes, um, and yeah, it does put a little bit more strain on your calf, so that's something you might want to bear in mind, or that's something I've experienced anyway. Whereas the Vaporfly, um, the Alpha Fly, sorry, is more of a, um, a flatter offset with four millimeter drop. Another thing about the offset I found is when I want to go fast, so if I want to surge in a race or if I want to go faster, maybe a sprint finish, this shoe definitely has the edge. Um, I don't know if it's whether it's because of the drop, the lack of the AirPods maybe, but it definitely feels a lot more responsive and faster when you really want to pick up the pace um, to try and um, finish strong. Whereas this shoe is definitely more efficient, if that makes sense. So when I hit that pace, I can, I can maintain, it feels like I can maintain it for longer. One final difference between the shoes is the Nike um, Alpha Fly has these Zoom AirPods in the shoe, um, which are completely new to the running shoe scene, and they do definitely take some getting used to. When I was wearing these for the first few runs, I definitely had some um, rubbing in my, ar the arches of my feet, they're quite narrow when it comes to the, um, in the arch around this area, I had some blisters. So finally, the similarities, they're both carbon fiber racing shoes, both very high stack height and both have Nike Zoom X foam. The main differences that I've found is the Vaporfly has an eight millimeter drop, whereas the Alpha Fly has a four millimeter drop. So this is slightly more aggressive for me, whereas this feels slightly more efficient. So maybe this shoe is more targeted towards longer runs, whereas this shoe I found definitely is the fastest over sort of the 5K distance. Moving on to the second part of the video, um, my experiences in the shoes. I'll start off with a few of my workouts that I've done. So I've been using these shoes um, on track. I've been doing 400 meter repeats in both of them, um, kilometre repeats, miles, some longer tempo runs. And what I can tell you is they definitely make your training faster so when you're trying to hit that tempo speed that you're used to if you're used to running tempo runs they definitely give you an edge and i've found that some of my tempo runs have almost been at my race pace so that's one thing i noticed when i started using these for my training runs and i used both of them on the track and they seemed um perfectly comfortable on the track some people thought they might be too high in terms of the stack height for all the corners but i didn't have any problems um, if I had to choose one for the track, I probably would choose the Vaporfly. It just feels that little bit more stable when um, running around the corners. And like I mentioned, it is a little bit faster um, when it comes to picking up the pace for a sprint finish. So especially in them shorter intervals, I found this shoe to be 
a little bit faster, more comfortable really. There's not a lot of difference between speeds, um, but I definitely would give the comfort factor to the Vaporfly. Um, so yeah, something to, to bear in mind when running your workouts uh, in these shoes, if you want to use them for workouts. Some people swear by only using them for race days, but I thought I paid, oh God, 260 pounds, 240 pounds for these shoes. So I want to work, I want to get my money's worth, especially there's no races at the moment. So I decided to use both these shoes for some training runs, some tempo runs, just to get used to them before I took them to some races. So with the Vaporfly, I have only raced in this shoe twice. I did a 5K in December, um, and I ran 16.06 and then yesterday actually I did a five mile race in these shoes, a virtual race and I went through the 5k in 15.47 so these shoes are definitely fast for that 5k um, and that's all I've really raced in these shoes, I haven't taken them any further in terms of racing. I've done some um, half marathons on my long, long runs, I think I ran an hour and 17 minutes for the half marathon in these shoes last weekend on a long run and very comfortable throughout. Whereas the Alpha Fly I've only used once in a race and that was for a 10K um, and I ran 32.48 which was a PB. So I've PB'd in both these shoes. And one thing I noticed about the race is I was trying to hit that target pace and once I hit it, it I didn't really have any problem with maintaining it throughout the race. So if it, Definitely a shoe for the even pace. I reckon for a marathon this would be really, really good. Just, just maintaining that pace. I'm not sure if it's the way it's made or the off the difference in offset, so it's slightly less aggressive at four mil. But I definitely found this easier to maintain the pace in the longer runs, whereas this shoe feels a bit more responsive and you have to put a little bit more into it but potentially maybe this shoe is a little bit faster. One other experience I had with using these shoes is when I took them out on my long runs, um, I don't know if you guys use Garmin, but the Garmin have a VO2 max, which is meant to calculate how efficient you are, how quickly your body processes oxygen. <clears throat> and when I use these shoes, my VO2 max went up to, I believe, from 69 to 71, um, just from using these shoes. So they definitely make you more efficient. Um, I don't know if it's, it links back to the Nike 4% where it makes you 4% quicker. These are meant to be the next percent, so they're meant to make you even quicker than that. But I definitely found they make you more a more efficient runner. So which shoe would I pick if I could only pick one? So it is close. This shoe is definitely an incredible shoe and I'll always remember my first run in it. These AirPods are crazy and it was definitely worth buying. So the intentionally when I brought both these shoes, I was going to send one of them back after testing it on but, um, that never happened, but if I had to pick one, I would definitely give it to the Vaporfly, actually. Um, it's definitely close, both incredible shoes, definitely make you run faster, PB's guaranteed, in my experience anyway, but the Vaporfly seems to have it for me. It's that little bit more aggressive, um, it's faster that I've found over the 5 and 10k distance, which is the distances I tend to race more. Um, I had absolutely no problem comfort wise. This shoe gave me blisters in the heel, whereas this shoe I haven't had any problem since having it. Now I don't want to take away too much from the Alpha Fly because it is an incredible shoe and it's very well engineered and Nike have really tried to, to make something different here. But the Vaporfly definitely takes it for me and I think a lot of professional athletes have actually chosen to use the older version of Nike's racing shoes. Um, the Vaporfly which suggests that this shoe I would say is the better shoe. It's £20 cheaper, more comfortable and it has a, the potential for me anyway to take me to faster speeds. So unfortunately if I was going to buy one of these shoes again, um, which I probably will because I'm using this shoe as a training shoe now because I love it so much, is the Vaporfly. So that just about sums up my review of these incredible shoes. Um, they're definitely worth trying. I've heard a lot of people have found they prefer the Alpha Fly, some people prefer the Vapor Fly, so it really is a mixed bag. I went for the Vapor Fly, the slightly older version, um, but let me know which shoe have you tried, which shoe do you prefer? Um, and yeah, that is pretty much it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to follow my running journey or follow me on my Instagram, which is Ben is Running as well. And yeah, that pretty much sums up the video. Thanks for watching again, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.